This video explains a framework that can be used to diagnose malnutrition. My name is Mitchell Zandis, and this is CNU. The Global Leadership Initiative on Malnutrition, or GLIM, is a framework that can be used in conjunction with a comprehensive nutrition assessment to diagnose malnutrition. It was developed over a three-year period from 2016 to 2018, was created based on expert consensus among leaders in clinical nutrition, and culminated in the publication of a consensus report from the global clinical nutrition community where it's outlined in detail. GLIM creates a path for clinicians to classify malnutrition as either moderate or severe. It also has an etiological component, meaning it helps to identify the cause of malnutrition. The group that created GLIM was made up of four clinical nutrition societies. The American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition, the European Society for Clinical Nutrition and Metabolism, the Clinical Nutrition and Metabolism Federation of Latin America, and the Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition Society of Asia. Their goal was to establish common terminology and diagnostic criteria for people to use across the globe. They did this because clinicians have been using a number of different definitions and assessment tools, making it difficult to understand the true prevalence of malnutrition, its influence on clinical outcomes, and the cost it presents to healthcare systems. Still, the group makes it clear that the intent is to promote the global use of these criteria that may in turn be readily used with other approaches and additional criteria of regional preference. So, they encourage the adoption of the GLIM criteria in practice, but they aren't insisting that it totally replaces the Academy Aspen criteria, the ESPEN criteria, the Subjective Global Assessment, or whatever assessment or diagnostic tool that's already being used. The GLIM framework is based on five criteria that are separated into two categories. There are the phenotypic criteria, which includes weight loss, low body mass index, and reduced muscle mass. And there are the etiologic criteria, which includes reduced food intake or assimilation and inflammation. To diagnose malnutrition, a patient must satisfy at least one criteria from each major category. The phenotypic criteria can then be used to determine the severity of malnutrition by looking to the cut points offered for moderate and severe malnutrition. The etiologic criteria don't influence severity, but according to the consensus report, they can help to guide appropriate interventions and expected outcomes. Looking closer at the phenotypic criteria, we can see that for weight loss, moderate malnutrition is characterized by a loss of 5-10% to body weight in the past 6 months, or 10-20% to beyond 6 months. Meanwhile, severe malnutrition is characterized by a loss of greater than 10% in the past 6 months, or greater than 20% beyond 6 months. I say this one is locked in because there doesn't appear to be any disagreement about it. Weight loss is featured in nearly all of the available malnutrition diagnostic tools, and the thresholds are somewhere in the ballpark as those listed here. The same cannot be said for low BMI. If you've watched my other videos on malnutrition, you know that BMI isn't one of the clinical characteristics that can be used to diagnose malnutrition using the Academy Aspen tool. This is because malnutrition can truly occur at any body size. The authors of the consensus report acknowledge this by stating, the experience from the current American population is that people are often overweight or obese and would need to lose substantial weight before low BMI designation would occur. Nevertheless, they follow this up by saying, since other regions of the world currently make use of BMI as a criterion for recognition of malnutrition, the GLIM criteria includes low BMI. 
They do note that further research is, however, needed to secure consensus reference data for Asian populations in clinical settings. This echoes a common debate over BMI and whether there should be unique cut points established for different races and ethnicities. The third and final phenotypic criteria is reduced muscle mass. Moderate malnutrition is characterized by a mild to moderate deficit, whereas severe malnutrition is characterized by a severe deficit. A significant aspect of this criteria is that the GLIM members are calling for validated assessment tools like DEXA, BIA, CT, and MRI. If none of these are available, they say that calf or arm muscle circumference measurements should be used. This is in place of subjective assessment through visualization and palpation and is a step forward from other diagnostic tools since the measurement tools previously mentioned produce the most reliable results. I think this aspect of the GLIM criteria will be difficult to apply though because most of these tools are not readily available across the globe and aren't always practical to use in the acute care setting. Moving on to the etiologic criteria, we have reduced food intake or assimilation and inflammation. Reduced intake can have multiple causes, but some examples include poor oral health, gastrointestinal distress, medication side effects, depression, and a lack of access to food. Reduced assimilation of food or nutrients is associated with malabsorptive conditions like short bowel syndrome, pancreatic insufficiency, bariatric surgery, and persistent vomiting or diarrhea. The specific criteria mentioned is less than or equal to 50% of estimated energy need for greater than one week or any reduction for greater than two weeks. Inflammation is broken down into acute disease or injury and chronic disease. These are the same as they are for the Academy Aspen tool, with acute disease representing severe inflammation and chronic disease representing mild to moderate inflammation. For GLIM, the use of inflammation as a criteria can be supported by laboratory markers like C-reactive protein or albumin, but it's not listed as a requirement. This is the path that the authors have outlined. You start by using any validated malnutrition screening tool. Then you obtain and assess the data for the five criteria. A formal diagnosis is warranted if the patient meets at least one criteria from each category. Then you determine the severity of malnutrition. Now that the GLIM criteria have been established based on expert consensus, the next step is to perform validation studies to see if it measures what it intends to measure, patients with malnutrition. At the time of making this video in 2022, this process is already well underway across the globe. You can see all my videos on malnutrition in the playlist shown here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one.